I came to a book of Ramana Maharishi and just I saw his picture and I read that sentence and that that energy just enhanced the interest to to read Ramana Maharishi. Yanka Koranova of Prague says every time she reads this book, it uplifts her. The energy, every time I open the book, I would just sometimes only open the book and it made me feel at peace. Ramana Maharshi's book on self-inquiry, Who Am I?, has brought Yanka enduring peace. I would just say I was searching for this peace all my life, every day, in everything that I was doing my life. I was searching for this peace beyond every meeting, every talking, every book, every encounter, everything I've achieved in my marriage with my child. I have never experienced such peace. My life changed completely. (laughs) And the obvious question, how do you deal with the opposite of this? How do you deal with sadness and grief in yourself, in your family, or in others? Uh, There is no sadness or grief. Self is there. Awareness is there. Peace is always there uninterrupted. So how has the teachings of Ramana Maharshi and his follower Sri Brahmam so totally changed Yanka? I have no idea. I have really no idea what happened there, but the experience was real, natural, just full of real peace. The heart was at such peace. Yanka has been seriously on this path since 2005. It's not easy at the beginning. Well, it was not for me to understand self-inquiry because it is not intellectual. Again, in my experience, it is introspective awareness that is seeing the rising of a thought. And it's a game that is going on since ever between the subject of false eye and its creation, its thought. And, and Sri Ramana has had an impact on your life as well that I don't think can ever be changed. Absolutely. He's the guru of the gurus. To me, Ramana is the beginning and the end and the middle. Self-investigation. Introspective awareness that is seeing the rising of a thought. A pathway to discovering one's truest identity. Yanka Kohanova has much to say from the teachings of Ramana Maharshi and Vivi Brahmam. Welcome to Soul Journeys. This was recorded on June 11, 2022, in the Czech Republic and California. Yanka Kohanova joins us now from Prague, the Czech Republic, and she's a devotee of Sri Ramana Maharshi and Sri Vivi Brahmam. Thank you for joining us today, Yanka, and how are you doing? Thank you very much for inviting, and I'm doing very well. Very, very good. So you've got, you've got a couple of wonderful teachers who have been leading you along the path of non-duality to uh, awakening to the truth of who you are. How long have you been on that path? Let's begin with that. Uh, I've been on the path since 2005, where I read a sentence from Ramana Maharishi and saw his picture. And as I said, my heart was blown away with the just one sentence? One you sentence. Do you remember it? It was something like the happiness you're seeking for is within you. <laughs> something that. And it's so obvious. And just the energy that, that, that was in that sentence, that was it. <laughs> Yanka, I'm impressed to learn of followers of Sri Brahman and of Ramana Maharshi around the world. Um, Mm. I'm not very familiar with that many followers of Ramana Maharshi here in America. I wish there were more. I'm always happy to find them. In San Diego, where we live, there's uh, one tiny group of us who have a satsang every week, and it's hard to find people on the same wavelength. How many people there in the Czech Republic, maybe throughout Europe, would you guess follow Ramana Maharshi? Well, in numbers, I don't know, but in our circle, there is quite a, quite enough followers because Paul Brunton, you know, he had had devotees in Czech Republic. I didn't know that. (laughs) Yes, it was a 
couple, they, they died 2000 and 2001, uh, husband and wife, and they they were teaching Advaita Vedanta. They were they were translating Ramana Maharishi, Paul Branton, and all these teaching they were spreading either secretly in communism and also publicly after after communism. So there have been a lot of devotees. Their lectures were visiting visited by three thousand people, and since that time there there is still a lot of books uh, about ramana maharishi so so let me ask you about the path that led you to ramana maharishi and then to sri brahma um, were you raised with any understanding or appreciation of either religion or spirituality or did that come later no, in your life no 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 it was forbidden at least in my family because of communism so really? So yes. uh, communism was an atheistic state in Europe, throughout uh, Eastern Europe, and when the Czech yes. Republic was uh, part people, of People could go to church, people could go to church, but uh, their children and their families would never get a good job. Children would never get to good schools. They would have to be a really hard working class people. And, uh, you know, my father, he signed, for the communist party, we lived in a village, but just because we could get to a normal good school and get just decent education. So that was all, but we could not visit church and he was not active in that communist party. It just needed a signature, but he had three children and he didn't want them to work on a field. So being raised in a communist environment didn't give you any opportunity to pursue your spiritual curiosity. How did you start doing that? And what led you to Ramana Maharshi? Well, uh, I got a good education. I learned languages. And when I was 18, I left to London where I lived and learned good English. And then I went to study to Germany. I studied uh, at university cultural anthropology. And that is a subject that, um, studies uh, cultures, their religion, you, you know everything about it. So that started my curiosity that which nation, which ethnical group in the world has found the real happiness for life. That was my search. And more I studied about the cultures, I saw that none of them, either in Africa or, or Solomon Islands or in Hawaii or in Amazon, you know, forest, anywhere in the world, nobody has found everlasting happiness. Or in America. Or in America, or in Europe, or Russia, or, or anywhere else. And, um, you know, as I was studying, I, I, I got married and returned to, to Czech Republic. I had a child. And when I had my daughter, Nina, well, I started to see things completely differently and I thought that love is about all, that love is the real fulfillment and the real tonic and a sense of, of everything. And I just wished I could have so much love for her that it's just more and more and, and just endless, just give her that much love. So that was what I was seeking. And then Somebody gave me a yoga book. So I was studying yoga and that made sense because it was holistic, it was wholesome, it was a lifestyle, it was exercise, it was spirituality, it was philosophy. It just was all in one. And by this uh, yoga studying, I came to a book of Ramana Maharishi and just I saw his picture and I read that sentence and that that energy just enhanced the interest to, to read Ramana Maharishi, although I didn't understand his books at all at the so, beginning. So how could you be attracted to this person? I have no idea. There's little understanding of what his teachings were about. The energy, every time I opened the book, I would just sometimes only open the book and it made me feel at peace. 
I would just sit there when I needed to calm down. I just took the book, looked at a picture, read one or two sentences, which I didn't understand the meaning, but I would sit in serene peace. And yeah, like that. It was really intuitive, really natural. So this was many years ago when you first found yourself attracted to him. What did yes. you do to expand your understanding? You probably didn't know a single person who was attracted to Ramana Maharshi's teachings <clears throat> of self-inquiry and the answers to the question of who am I? You were on your own. Was that, was that hard for you? No, 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 no. Because in between, I was living just my life with my small family, with my husband and myself, and we were really happy. And I was really, I remember I was so happy because my mom was there. And, and I remember it was really, really happy period of my life. And then um, within a year of meeting Ramana Maharishi, I was invited to Sri Brahman satsangs. And then that was it. That he was started to expand your awareness. And, and understanding of Ramana Maharishi. Yes. Out, outwardly that, and inwardly also. And on that subject, the question that comes up in my mind, <clears throat> we never know who's seeing these interviews, but occasionally there are new people new to the path. In fact, just mm -hmm. the other day, I got a, on YouTube now, videos pop up unbidden for people. And if the title or the subject looks attractive, some people yes. look at it. And this man wrote me to ask more about this very subject of self-inquiry. So mm -hmm. for the beginner who might be introduced to this subject through our interview for the first time, tell me what you get out of it. What's the highest point? What's the most important thing to know to be launched onto the path of self-inquiry? Well, I can only describe my experience because it is inner path. And that, for me, first of all, is to purify the mind. The mind has to be made calm and pure. Get rid of all cravings, of all anxieties. And by that purity, the mind gets mature, pure. And suddenly, the thoughts are not overwhelming anymore there starts to rise awareness that is seeing the thoughts very clearly. First at the process of passing by, but later with more awareness, it starts to see the creation of the thoughts. Then it starts to see the awareness by effortless awareness is seeing the creator of the thought but yet the mind has to be very calm and mature i think for this process and seeing the creator the self-inquiry starts who is seeing these thoughts who created the thoughts it's very spontaneous actually it's not full of effort and, you know, full of tapas or whatever. It is very beautiful and natural process when the mind is calm. The self-inquiry just flows from within. And by dissolving the thoughts, the peace increases. The heart energy expands really yet that process must be steady must be steady must be really steadily established the peace of mind must be steadily established so to me this is self-inquiry let me ask you a question about this uh, sometimes people ask me, and they ask me only because they see uh, video interviews, and I tell mm -hmm. them I'm no teacher and I'm no expert, but they'll say, okay, I understand the first part in its simplest form of self-inquiry, mm -hmm. 
is to say, in whom are these thoughts occurring? Yes. Thoughts that I'm, yes. that this yes. person seems to be thinking right now. And the correct answer to that is, they are occurring in me. And then the follow up okay. question is, who am I? Mm -hmm. I found it challenging to explain the answer to other people to that question. How do you answer that? Who am I? You know, I think it's challenging because it is not real. <laughs> the I is not real. It is mind creation. It's a, a picture. You are a body. And it's actually not true. It's illusion. How can you explain? You know, if, if it would be easy to explain, like this is my hand, I can show, everybody can see the shape. But the I thought doesn't exist. So it's very difficult to explain. It's actually kind of a feeling, a perceiving of oneself within with different qualities. When you say, when you come to the final question, like, okay, it's occurring to me, who am I? There can be a certain quality, quality of that I created by the mind, certain kind of feeling, and that will be dissolved by the steady awareness because it recognizes it's only illusion. It's a, it's a picture or feeling that is just, you know, there for a few seconds and then it vanishes again. So that illusory sense of who am I is the most challenging part for me to even attempt to try to clarify or explain to a newcomer because they're obviously not ready for it. I was not ready for it. It mm -hmm. took me many years to get over the feeling that this was blasphemy to suggest that I don't yeah. exist <laughs> and that um, and that the truth of who one is is awareness. Some people would call that God. So that's heresy for many people raised in a religion. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that or share that to people who might want to say, Yanka, I see your happiness and peace. What do you do to acquire that, that I can learn from? How do you try to explain that to them if you do at all? Um, at the beginning, I used to, but now I don't share. <laughs> because the, it is really in a process. And how, how to explain, for example, that the I thought is not one solid feeling. I thought is not one solid feeling that is there 24 hours a day. Each thought has its own I thought. So it's a separate it's a separate thought, one by one. In the gap between is Atman, is Brahman, whatever you call it, is the self. So the moment the mind is really calm, quiet, you see one by one. It's all separate eyes that are rising from one creator. From the, the, How to explain this? It's It's... It's a process that one has to discover within. Well, the truth is also, and correct me if I'm wrong or close, mm -hmm. but not quite right on this, that one has to discover that, <clears throat> in my case, this entity called mm -hmm. Ted is the fictional mind-body Ted. Mm -hmm. The fictional mind, fictional thoughts, fictional taste buds, fictional arm. And, you know, it's... I'm surprised when I hear people have overcome their cultural environmental growth through life thinking just the opposite, that that is a real you with real mind, with real thoughts. Uh, Ted, I, would put, I would put it this way. The body is there, but the owner, the I thought, um, makes it its own. That's the difference. The body, the atoms of it, everything has actually no owner. It is there, but the owner is not there. The illusion is the ownership only. So it's not that it is unreal, but at the moment when there is no I, is there a body or 
Well, I think this is an interesting point. It's a game that we can play. A much game. Like Ramana it's a game. About it. And it's my, a game. my wife and I go back and forth on variations on a similar theme where uh, we'll say uh, the body is real within the dream. And we both look at each other and nod our heads, affirming that, yes, the body in the dream is real, but it's still a dream. <laughs> a dream isn't real. So yeah. it's, it's, you have to dance very slowly and carefully along this path, don't you? Mm, that is true. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> instead of me asking you a question now, I'd like you to just talk from your heart about some of the things that you've discovered along this path, talking to others, sharing it with your husband and your family, being alone in the still of the night when a new idea comes to you or a new understanding of self about where you are and where you're headed on this path. I don't think anybody remains static. So you've come all this distance and you've grown all this much. Where do you think you're headed in this perceived lifetime? Uh, the understanding is the self is there. Self-realization is there for everyone. It is self is there. The well, only thing is to remove the mind. The rest of Yanka and how long that will take it's not, it's, it's the grace. I think of the process of awakening, and that's a term people use a lot on this path in America, is a wonderful stepping stone, bad analogy, in the direction of full awakening, full mm -hmm. self-realization. Do you look at your growth and think of yourself as being awakened at that level, and you're still moving towards full self-realization? Or are you at another level? Um, I would say there is still somebody to burn, somebody to dissolve, for sure. Do you know of anybody in the Czech Republic or throughout Europe or outside of India, anywhere in the world who is awakened, who is not that they say it, not that they boast about it, not that they invest their ego in it, but you can just tell that they are. I know in Czech Republic about one person and only th that being appointed by Sri Brahman. But I, I, I would not dare to say it publicly. Mm -hmm. So what else do you want to say about this? Uh, mm -hmm. What else might you want to say or feel the, the itch to inform us about? How do, you the, deal the with, how do you deal with sadness and grief and perceived failures and perceived harm in yourself in your family or in others uh there is no sadness or grief self is there awareness is there peace is always there uninterrupted and everything that comes is immediately recognized by awareness so if i were new to ramana's teachings i would say yanka what about somebody you know who becomes very, very sick, let's say with the COVID, the pandemic, mm -hmm. and their family members die? Would you not feel grief and, and hurt for them? Is that what you mean? That peace within is so changeless that compassion is there for sure. Compassion is always there, no doubt. But the inner peace effortlessly is always there, but compassion also. How to describe it differently? I don't know. Oh, you did a very, very good job. I really like the way you're answering all of these questions. And maybe a final question, if it's not too personal, and we don't have to get into any specifics, but walking through life in this perceived world, one, encounter, one encounters suffering in themselves, in their own family members. Yes, yes. There's I come from that. I know. I know. There are accidents. There are there is losing a job. There are failures. How do you Formal deal with things. it in your own life? You know, when you have self-experience, because there is self-experience and there is permanent state of self. That is right. the difference. Right? 
Yes. In the self-experience, there is nothing to see. There is nothing to hear. There is only self. The world is moving, yet is not moving. It has no qualities of good and bad. In that state, it's hard to, it's, there is no one to say, oh, this is misfortune of that person. Because it's all in the self. It's all according to some karma or, but I have children and of course I deal with some concerns and some expectations and of course fears. But Sri Brahman enormously, enormously helped me with this because that was my main um, vasana obstacle, my main soft spot where I always like, I, I could see everything just um, equal, all the events in the world. But when it came to my children, there is this mother attachment that always triggered something within me. So by the years where I would grieveably cry from the beginning when something happened, my child had a fever, you know, you know, whatever, that has been reduced to concerns. And now, now, after 16 years, I dare to say that every time the creator creates concern, this will be like this. I can see the creation of some fear. Immediately, the awareness snaps it away. Nothing happens. Did you say immediately awareness sweeps it away? Is that what you said? Yes, yes, like dissolves it. As soon as you recognize what Im the yes. truth is, it's swept away. Yes, because it's a thought that the mind created from the fear. Immediately, the, because the, the thing is, it's like inception, like, oh, my son, it will, this will happen. It's like inception. And all you do for the rest of the day, you try to solve how to avoid the situation. But at the moment when you catch the thought, the inception, the seed, nothing, even more happier and more incredible events take place that would be never possible to create in my mind, even for the best of my children. The things take such a wonderful turn in a bliss. It's, it's just, this is what I start to, to learn and recognize that the thought must be caught immediately. Well, Yanka, thank you so much. You've been just wonderful and I'm not exaggerating and I'm not um, flattering you. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I need to say this. I've interviewed quite a few people on the path to self-realization following the path of self-inquiry, Ramana Maharshi's mm -hmm. teachings, Sri Brahman's teachings. Yes. Uh, and they all give wonderful answers and really good interviews. But you mm -hmm. put it in a language. It's not that it's a simple language. You've just given uh, the viewers to this a chance to see more clearly with some of these concepts, which can be challenging truly mm. are and i'm i'm really in your debt for this and i just want to say thank you for agreeing to sit there in prague uh for this soldier's interview today and in a short while after learning about ramana maharshi yanka discovered her own living teacher of ramana maharshi's wisdom shri vv brahman an indian sage who has followed Ramana Maharshi's teachings for years, Yanka's first day with him was exceptional. A friend of mine called me to a meeting and she said there is an Indian sage in the November 2006. And she said, he gives teaching, you need nothing to come. And my friend was there and she said, it changed my life within one year after blessing. So I went there without nothing and the experience was, it changed my life.
And I'm going to guess because I already know that teacher's name is Shreesh Vivi Ramam. Yes. And how was it that he was able to have such a great impact on you so quickly? Actually, I really have no idea, but I remember sitting at the back of the hall. There were like 50, 80 people with my friend and suddenly my heart started to beat really, really strong. And I just watched the sweater moving. And I said, Whoa, my God, what is happening? And the friend said, your heart is dancing from joy. <laughs> and that moment she said it, Sri Brahma entered the room and that heart beating stopped. And there was only awareness that was beyond everything. How to describe something like that? I have no idea how to describe it, but it was something completely new for me but real and natural. So Yanka, and, I'm brand new to Sri Brahman. What yes. was it about him, just the thought about him that made you react that way, both before he entered the room and after he entered the room? I have no idea. I have really no idea what happened there, but the experience was real, natural, and just full of real peace, peace. The heart was at such peace for three days after this meeting that, that I would just say I was searching for this peace all my life, every day in everything that I was doing my life. I was searching for this peace beyond every meeting, every talking, every book, every encounter, everything I've achieved in my marriage with my child, I have never experienced such peace. And um, my life changed completely. <laughs> you know, my friend whose name is Paul Wong told me mm -hmm. about you. And when I asked him, when I interviewed him about Sri Ramam and Ramana Maharshi, mm -hmm. he said that he doesn't even have to sit there and understand the words coming out of Sri Brahman's yes. mouth. He can sit there for two hours and just feel electrified all through his body. Yes. I've never heard of that very often in my life about teachers before. That is true. It's just uh, serenity, peace. And um, you feel at the right place at the right time. And it is the same experience that I get when I am at Ramana Ashram, sitting in front of Bhagavan or just being at Arunachala, it is just the same energy that is real and natural. And I've been seeking for all my life. So when you do listen closely to the words of Sri Brahman, do you understand them? Do you see that they're similar, if not identical, to Ramana Maharshi's own words? Mm -hmm. I would say the teaching is identical completely. Maybe there is another vocabulary because Sri Ramana Maharishi was translated in books with perfect English. And Sri Brahman, he's Indian and his English is uh, not that perfect, but actually the meaning and content is the same. Also, teaching of Sri Brahman is very beneficial that he uncovers layers of the mind one after another. When you listen to his teaching or you don't listen to his teaching, the force of his presence is really pushing the mind inside. And very naturally, there is this introspection that you see the mind. And I've heard many times, uh, many people at his satsangs that like 200, 300 people, they attend his satsangs. So many people, they used to say, we came with questions. I don't know, 20 people with 20 different questions and all have been answered within one satsang, within one teaching. So who can do that? Who can answer all questions saying all the time the same and yet everybody receives his answer and not only receives his answer, but 
in my experience, also removes the question, removes the answer. How far have you progressed with both Sri Brahman's teachings and Ramana's teachings? The progress is uh, that the self-inquiry has got, it has many, I would say, like layers, and it's getting deeper and deeper. It's not easy at the beginning. Well, it was not for me to understand self-inquiry or Atma Vichara because uh, my Vasana's understanding of life was very extroverted. But by the years of uh, Sri Brahman's presence and teaching and removing the layers of my mind, the, the mind got purer and purer. And in his words, one is ready to understand the self inquiry because it is not intellectual. Again, in my experience, it is introspective awareness that is seeing the rising of a thought. And it's a game that is going on since ever between the subject of false eye and its creation, its thought. My long, long, long time teacher. Yes. Sai Baba in India would say the same thing using the same word. It's a mm -hmm. game. And what he meant was take this game called non-duality, looking for the one, the truth of your greatest, highest self that bears no resemblance to the, to the uh, Yanka that you think you are or that your husband mm -hmm. thinks you are uh, and pursue that as if it's a game and play the game, play the game always. I don't think that's a bad way to characterize what Ramana's teachings and Sri Brahman's teachings are all about. How about you? Uh, we have to find the player. <laughs> we have to find the illusionary player and the peace that spreads beyond. It's just more and more same and same. It's like um, the less Yanka there is, the more peace happiness, harmony, and balance. It is in the life, not only my life, but also my family, my close friends. The less they get me, the more they get, I would put it. Because I am in no way to, to, the, to the higher power. A word about Sri Brahman, your teacher whom you see, I take it on a regular basis. I understand you've been to Tiruvannamalai many times and Yes. other places in India. So how often do you go? Uh, we used to go every year, every winter, but now we are lucky to visit India twice a year. Well, that's great. Also, it was my impression that I first understood him to be a serious man, a somber man who takes his understanding of the truth of identity very, very seriously and intellectually and spiritually. But then I found that he's a very joyful man, a very happy man. And that surprised me. Did it surprise you when you saw that side of him? No, 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 no. Because we are lucky enough that we can host Sri Brahman since 2009 in our house. In your house? Yes, yes. He's come to Prague. Yes, every year. Oh, that's since great. Tell me about that. Yes, since 2009, he comes to our house for like three weeks, three and a half weeks. It depends. And he conducts his satsangs in Prague. So we take care of his um, bodily existence. And of course, we organize the satsang, the hall and the food and everything. So I know him very much as, as loving and funny and, and kind, gentle, innocent, first of all, and most of all, humble and innocent being yes i see well what a joy take a second or two or a minute or two and tell us about what those experiences must be like on a day-to-day -day basis as he's a guest in your home for a long period of time i know you have satsang yes. i'm familiar with what happens there what about during the day when you don't have that satsang built into it uh, you treat Ted, him just like a favorite uncle? Is he a friend? Is he still your teacher? We, we, we uh, call him Nana, which means in his language of father. Nana. Nana. It's Nana Sri Brahman is 
always the same. His movements, his talking, the way he eats, the way he punctually follows his routine without any movement of uh, uneasiness of it is incredible it's all of us around him who change every year who are softer who are gentler who are less being themselves as before yet he's always the same oh that's that's a very wonderful. humble very very humble and very modest and yet very funny and always ready for his devotees always thank you yanka you are very welcome and it was a joy because talking about sri brahman who saved our lives literally and and sri ramana has had an impact on your life as well that i don't think can ever be changed absolutely he's the guru of the gurus to me ramana <laughs> is the beginning and the end and the middle I feel like I should say thank you and take good care of yourself and your family, but there's no need to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are taking care. Their presence is taking care very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Yanka. And perhaps we'll meet again and do this at another level on another topic of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have a great day. And... Say hello to your wife. And I sure will. And to your family, give them all a hug for me. Thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs> Sojourns owes a debt of gratitude to Yanka, both for this interview and for her assistance on our interview with Sri Vivi Brahma, which is also posted to Sojourns on YouTube. And thanks to Yanka's daughter, Nina, without whose technical assistance this interview would not have occurred.